Greetings in the name of God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to St. Mark Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Kirk Griffin, and I'm pleased to join together with you today. While we're physically apart, we can still be socially together, worshiping our Lord on this day. We gather this day in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious Lord, our hearts and minds are revealed to you. You know all our desires, worries, secrets, and fears. By the baptismal power of the Holy Spirit, you have claimed us as your sons and daughters, forgiven and washed clean in all our sins. Wash your Holy Spirit over us once again, so that we may be refreshed in your presence justified and sanctified by your perfect love, given in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Living in our human mortality, each of us is a sinner, corrupt and broken. If we think we are perfect without need of help and salvation, we are fooling ourselves. Only by confessing the weakness before the Lord, repenting of our sins, and seeking God's healing, can we receive forgiveness and strength? Let us join together in making confession. Gracious and forgiving Lord, we lift up in our minds and spirit to you that you know us through and through. And so we confess that to which you already know we have not done all that we should. We have fallen short of the glory of your Son. And yet, Lord, we ask that you forgive our sins and remember us according to your steadfast love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ our Savior, amen. Almighty God, by his mercy, has given his son to die for us, and for his sake, he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join in singing our first hymn, Amazing Grace. from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. Ezekiel writes, The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out of the Spirit and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. 
There were many, many, many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. And he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, and there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came upon them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. And we are cut off completely. Therefore I prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves, and bring you up from your graves. And you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. We enter into dialogue using the scriptures. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. They cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and loving in all his works. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed, and ministers to them in their illness. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. The Holy Gospel for this weekend is taken from St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord for perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two more days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. 
After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus answered, however, have been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came in also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? Because some of them said, How could he not open the eyes of the blind man and have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, Come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the words of my mouth and the ears of our hearts, be open to the word of God this day. Amen. Today's readings speak about fear and about hope. They speak about understandings 
and feelings that we all experience. Feelings that in this time and in this age, we really understand. The unknown, the worry, the stress. COVID-19, the fear that we have, the troubling rumors, the fear of what the world is going through. It impacts us all, not just our homes, not just our community, not just our nation, but around the world. And we struggle in fear, in worry, not knowing what tomorrow will be, not knowing what is going to come, not knowing when it will end, the ramifications of it, the financial ruin, the upheaval, the unknown. We know fear. It's a part of us. It's very prevalent in our day today. And I believe that in our stories today, we hear of other people that knew fear. Ezekiel, in his time, understood fear. His people, the Israelites, have been demolished. They have been crushed under the Babylonian captivity. Nebuchadnezzar and his mighty army had swept through their country of Judah, burned their fields, destroyed their homes. Jerusalem, their capital, their very place in their heart where they worshiped together was no more. Now they were held in captivity many miles, many miles away from everything they knew. They were slaves living in the worst part of the land, struggling from day to day. They could no longer worship in their temple. They could no longer be together. And they didn't know what tomorrow would be. They had no hope. They knew that feeling of fear. And the same thing is happening for Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha, many years after Ezekiel, 600 years or so, in the time of Jesus, experienced that same unknown feeling. Their brother had become sick. They had cared for him. I would imagine they did everything they could to comfort him, to give him strength, to give him hope. But he kept getting sicker. They didn't know what to do. So as a last hope, they call out to Jesus. They send a message to Jesus. Come and help. But before Jesus gets there, their brother has died. Their hope is gone. They bury him in a grave. And in their day, not just losing a brother isn't bad enough, but they've lost their protector. Unless they have another living male heir, Mary and Martha could well lose their home, their livelihood, their peace. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what tomorrow will be. They know fear. It's a part of who they are at that moment. But in both stories, it's also a story of hope. A hope in the despite, in the face, in overcoming that fear. In the time of Ezekiel, Ezekiel had a lot of doubts, a lot of fears. The people had fear. But God comes to Ezekiel, snatches him away, and takes him to the Valley of Bones. That would be a scene to see, a valley filled with bones, dried bones. And God says, prophesy to them. A preacher prophesying to dry bones. That is no hope. God says, do you believe they can live? Ezekiel, even in the face of God, says, you know, Lord. He doesn't have that faith, that strength, that confidence. You know, Lord, because he sees the suffering. He sees the pain. He sees the death. He sees this valley of bones. And God says, prophesy to these bones and they will rise up. Bone will reconnect, bone to bone. Sinews and muscles will come upon them. Flesh will cover them, and they will live. And so Ezekiel does. 
He prophesies to the bones and they rise up. And he prophesies to the breath and the winds. And the spirit blows just like a creation. And it fills them with new life. And they are restored. And they have hope. Mary and Martha had the same problem. Even when Jesus came, Martha didn't know what to do. Jesus asked her, do you believe that he will rise? And she thinks he means in the final judgment. She doesn't understand because she sees death. She sees no hope. He's been in the grave four days. But Jesus comes and commands them, despite what people say, he commands them to open the grave and he calls Lazarus forth. And after four days in the grave, Lazarus comes forth, the one who was dead, comes forth alive, restored to life, and they have hope. Both stories are about fear of people that were struggling, that had no hope, that had fear, that God comes to and grants them restoration of life and grants them hope. In this day, today, we need to hear that same message, that no matter what we may be looking at, what we might see around us, what the news might tell us, we have a Lord that is acting, that is with us, that gives hope. May you be filled with the peace of the Lord this day. May you be filled with that hope, overcoming all doubt, all fear, all struggles, all fears. Know that the Lord is with you. May you be filled with that hope. Amen. And may the peace and grace of God be with you this day and throughout this week to come. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our next hymn, In the Cross of Christ. confess together, confessing the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Turning our hearts now to God who is gracious and merciful, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, you are the resurrection and the life. Grant that assurance to your people this day. Wash away all our tears and bind up the brokenhearted, giving us the strength and the comfort of knowing your everlasting promise. Lord, in your mercy, God of life and hope, there are many suffering this day from disasters, floods, storms, and all kinds. People are filled with doubt, fear, and worries. Grant your help to be with those in need, to be with the homeless, the hospitalized, the homebound, those facing financial uncertainty, those facing sickness and distress. Be especially with all those we lift up in our prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God Almighty, we ask this day for your wisdom and your spirit of truth to come upon all our leaders and our caregivers that are dealing with the pandemic. Give strength and health to the doctors, nurses, administrators, and scientists that are on the front lines fighting to help and to seek ways to end this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you are our resurrection and life everlasting. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. We pray for those who grieve this day, especially the family and friends of all whom we name now to you. Breathe new life into us so that we also too might join with them and might live with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these words of our prayers as we join together in praying the words your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth, and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you and grant you hope. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Mark with the cross of Christ. Live in love. Live faithful to God. Thanks be to God. Let us now join in our closing hymn, Lord Dismiss Us. <laughs>